Placid? Yes, yes. Hi, Placid. How are you? Hi. Hi, I'm fine. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Yes, thank you too. You're welcome. I'm still waiting for this interesting session. Oh, yes. It's going to be good. Yeah. We're going to get started at uh, 1 o'clock. So we have maybe 10 more minutes. Yeah, you need yes, a I pen see. and a piece of paper. Yeah, yes, for I the see. workshop. I have it. Oh, you yes, have, I have it. it. You're yeah. ready. This is, here it is. There. Okay, <laughs> excellent. Yeah, okay. Have you um, gone to any other conference sessions today? Yes, today I have joined the opening session, which you, the opening session, and the, after I have joined the second one, which is the conservation. Yes, then, then check. <laughs> Urban biodiversity conservation. Okay, great. Yes, we have done two sessions, two different sessions. I have also attended the, the third one, talked about the overcoming conservation challenge in Rwanda. Mm. Yeah, which is my current country. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's a great, how was it? It was so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. They talked about different biodiversity and their current status in Rwanda and also their conservation status and how you can put the effort in the conservation of the wildlife in Rwanda. Nice. Yeah. It was so interesting. That's great. Mm. I wish we were in Rwanda right now. Yes, I'm in Rwanda. I wish we were in Rwanda with you right now for the Congress. Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is in Rwanda. But I hope in 2023, we'll be here. Yeah, yes. hopefully see you hopefully. then. Mm, person. It's a country to meet you. Same here. Mm. I'm playing some of my favorite uh, Christmas songs. <laughs> Yes, I, um, it is so listening to it's very so good. <laughs> and me, I like uh, music like that. Mm. Mm. I hope we get some more people. We got I'm sure people. we will closer we gotta... to the time. Yeah, mm. we're you're you're um you get a gold star for being our first one here. Yes, I'm the first one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and Joseph's coming. Good. Okay. Let us call them to this ICCB to this group. Yes. Maybe mm, sometimes they need if the challenge to join. They struggle with this platform. <clears throat> Let's see. Are you in? Um... Kigali right now? No, I'm um, in Namashiti, along the Nyunga National Park. Oh, nice. Mm. Have you ever been here in Rwanda? No, never. No. I want to come. Oh, you are a must come. Thank Nyunga, you. Nyunga is far from Kigali, around the 200 kilometers long. It looks beautiful it looks from the beautiful. photos I've seen and the ones that you've shared. Mm. Yeah, yes, you must come and visit. Definitely. Um, yeah. Hi, Joseph. Hi, Joseph. Welcome. I don't know if he's hearing us. Not sure, hopefully. Maybe he's still getting settled. This song um, we put around on in my my parents' kitchen mm. around on Christmas, and we dance around the kitchen, <laughs> 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 getting ready for uh, Christmas dinner. So oh. we all have to dance. <laughs> Maybe that's so fun. 
maybe it remembers you, your favorite food. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And how was your internship, Placide? Sorry? How was your internship? Oh yeah, my internship is so powerful. It is so powerful. And I learned a lot with it. Till now, I have learned most and most things about it. Nice. Yeah. I'm really thanking CLP for the glance. Mm. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to hear more about it at some stage to, to catch up and, and hear what you've been up to. Yeah. Hi, Joseph. I see you in the chat. Welcome. Glad to have you here. Joseph, you're familiar with this activity, but um, grab a pen and paper to get ready for the act for the exercise. And we'll all put our good energies out that we get a lot more participants here. Oh, no problem. That's okay. No. He's a trouble with you. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Hi, Adrian. Welcome. If you can hear me, Adrian, we'll get started in um, about eight minutes. And you'll need a pen and a paper, piece of paper for the workshop. So you have plenty of time to, to grab that and get settled. And we'd love to know where you're calling from. Tell us in the chat or come off mute. If you have any favorite holiday songs, tell us in the chat what they are. Maybe I can find them, play them. Oh, sorry you're having trouble with your microphone, Adrian. Um, glad you like the music. These are some of my favorites. Some non-traditional Christmas music. Glad you can join us. Where are you calling in from, Adrian? Oh, New Hampshire, great. Leela and I are in New York, so not too far away. And Placide and Joseph, if you'd like to introduce yourself in the chat, so everybody knows where, where you're calling in from. Get started in four minutes. In four minutes, we're gonna have 15 more people on this call. <laughs> oh, here's another one. Welcome. 
Sholo Falo. Am I saying that right? Or is it Lori? Welcome. Great to have you here. <clears throat> Joseph from Ghana, Placid from Rwanda. Excellent. Hi, Laura. Welcome. We are going to get started in three minutes and to get ready for the workshop you'll need a pen and a piece of paper you have a few minutes to go and get that if you need to tell us where you're calling in from laura where are you where are you from i'm in hinton alberta canada oh nice Excellent. And Sholo from Botswana. Welcome. Get started in a few minutes. What was that, Laura? limit of my Setswana. Oh, excellent. <clears throat> you can tell all of your colleagues, all of your friends at ICCB to come join us in the workshop if you know anybody else who's part of the Congress. We'll get started in a couple minutes. Hopefully we'll get a few more people. If not, we might not even need breakout rooms, Leela. <laughs> Sounds good, we'll play it, it by ear, definitely. Yeah. Let's see, I think I have just about one o'clock Eastern. I'm gonna pause my music. Hi, Promode, welcome. Hi. Nice to see you, or see your name anyway. Um, let's see, okay, I think we can go ahead and get started. We have a small but mighty group here to talk about leadership styles. If you're able to turn your video on, that would be wonderful. It's always, you know, it makes a big difference to be able to see people's faces in a session. But if that's not possible, of course, we understand. Um, and, and welcome, welcome to our workshop about um, identifying strengths as conservation leaders. I'm Christina Emmerich and I'm based at the Wildlife Conservation Society in New York. And I'm running this workshop with my colleague, Leela Rosen. Uh, you can see both of our um, virtual backgrounds. We both work with the Conservation Leadership Program. And some of you on this call, Placid, Joseph, Promode, um, are familiar with CLP. You've been uh, connected to our network. And we're all about investing in the next generation of conservation leaders. And so the workshop that we have for you today is one of the activities pulled from our leadership course. And it's all about understanding um, more about each of our leadership styles. And I say that plural because often we have more than one. We move between them and our styles change over time. So we have one hour together and we it's, this is going to be inter, an interactive session so we'll be asking you to do some, an activity to share some reflections with one another to to share in the chat um, and we hope this will be uh, an engaging experience for all of you here 
Okay, we've got some more people joining. Wonderful. Hi, Nina. Delphine, Ramya. Excellent. Welcome. We are just getting started. Um, so you didn't miss anything. We're just diving in now uh, to our, our workshop on um, leadership styles. If you haven't done so already, please feel free to introduce yourself in the chat. Tell us your name, tell us where you're calling in from. We would, we would love to know that. Okay, and as I said before, where are we headed today? We're gonna take just a few minutes and give a primer, a brief orientation to what we mean when we talk about leadership in the context of this workshop. Then we're gonna do the activity where you get to dig deeper to learn more about your style as a leader. And then that's going to raise some questions it's like, okay, this is, I've learned this about myself. What does this mean for my strengths and how do my, and my areas for growth? And then how do I work amongst a network of leaders? Before we do that, I just want to take a, take a step back. I mean, like, why is it important that we even think about our leadership style, our leadership strength, what we're good at, how we do this work? Why does this, why does this matter? Are there any ideas? You just come off mute if you want to share something. Why are we interested in this? Why are you here? Um, all right, I'll jump in. Um, well, I, I think multiple reasons. One, I just like the work. I mean, I love nature and wildlife and being in nature and so doing it as a my job is pretty much a dream. So there's that on a selfish note. <laughs> and then on an unselfish note, of course, I'd like to uh, spend my career and my life doing something that is going to leave an Im impact and um, have a positive effect on the world. So that's certainly a motivation. Yeah. Thanks, Adrian. Other thoughts? Other thoughts. Why do we care about, do we care about leadership style? Leadership leadership? Style, leadership. Uh, am I audible? Yes, Ramya. Oh, yes, uh, I, I think um, I think each leader have their own attributes or rather everybody has a certain level of leadership potential. And it's, it's often uh, good to understand, you know, where you kind of fall short, where you can improve and so on and so forth. So I think it's nice to understand the, um, you know, what styles you fit into and where you can kind of improve on. Exactly. Wonderful. Thank you. Joseph, I see your hand up. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Speak loudly. So, okay. So one good thing about knowing um, yourself, I think it's the first thing is to know yourself and then know where you fall as a leader. And if you know this, it helps you to know how you are able to relate with people in achieving um, a goal. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Knowing more about yourself, it helps um, working with others to achieve a goal. Is there one, one more person who wants to share something? Why are we having this conversation? Sia Vash, do you, I see you're off mute. Do you want to share? <laughs> Oh, maybe not. Uh, yes, it's actually, hello, can you hear Hi. me? Hi, yes. Hey, uh, yeah, so uh, actually I just joined uh, the uh, meeting, but as I had uh, some courses in leadership and conservation, there was some uh, points such as, um, how to do the negotiation skills uh, during your leadership, which I find it very important and to how to achieve to one uh, stage that you can actually have some kind of a uh, mutual uh, to other people in the group. And you have to keep develop that uh, in, in any projects with other people, with certain people. Great, thank you for that. 
uh, negotiation is certainly an, another important leadership skill. Um, great. So um, thank, thanks you, to those of you who shared. We are here to learn more about ourselves, about our leadership styles, so that um, we can give our best, the best of ourselves. We can elicit the best from our teams um, and ultimately to do good work, the good work that we care about. Um, conservation. That's that's why we are all here. Um, so tapping into the learning more about ourselves in service of the broader um, the broader goals that we each have. So there's just two distinctions that I want to take a couple of minutes to make before we do the activity, and this is this distinction between authority and leadership. So when we think about authority, we're we're talking about po formal power which is given to somebody through their position or title. So we all know people who are in positions of authority. That's the manager of your team. That's the CEO of the organization. That's the head of the church. Um, somebody who has a title, manager, CEO, and with that title, they have power. It's given to them because they, have, they hold that position. And this is different from our understanding of leadership which is power which is earned, it's informal, and it's earned through the actions and the choices that we make. And so in this understanding, everyone's a leader. And you earn your power through the actions that you take and the decisions that you make. Doesn't matter what your title is, doesn't matter what your position is, um, it's all up to, to how, you, how you choose, what you choose to do. Um, and so we can earn our leadership over time. We can build our own individual leadership over time through these choices that we make. So how do we do that more effectively, right? That's the big question. So we'll be spending a little bit of time on that later. And so as we all know, you can have a leader um, who has authority, great leader, takes great actions, and also has the position, sure. And then we also know there are situations where there are authorities, people with the position, but don't, not taking the leadership action. They're not taking, making choices that are in, in service of, this, of the, big, uh, the, um, the common good. Um, okay, so that's the first distinction I wanna make. Are there any questions about that? Can you give me a thumbs up if you're following along? Yep, everybody's good. I see some thumbs up, great. All right, so the next distinction I wanna make really quickly is between this, this, idea, this idea of a leader as a hero versus this idea of leader as a host. And this um, comes from a paper by Margaret Wheatley and the reference will be at the end. But really the idea here with this is sometimes we can fall into a trap and think that the leader is the, per is the person. You know, I'm, I'm the leader and I have to figure it out and um, it's up to me. I, you, sometimes I can feel really lonely or they're the leader, they're, they're figuring it out. I don't have to get involved. Um, it's, not up to, it's not up to me, it's up to them over there, that person who's the leader. And that's this idea of leader as hero and it can be it, very limiting. And so what we wanna see more of is this idea of leader as host, where we have a leader, yes, but they're working among, among a network of leaders. It's not just me. It's me in my leadership working with you in your leadership and the strengths that you're bringing and the strengths that Leela is bringing and the strengths that Promote is bringing. And we are a network. The leadership, the power is distributed. Um, it's not up to me alone to figure it out. It's up to us as a group of leaders to find the, be the best next step. So that's, that's one shift that we, um, we want to see encouraged. And so um, one of the things we're going to do in this workshop is, okay, yes, I am my leader. I am my purple bubble, Christina L. And we're going to learn more about what does it mean? What does my leadership look like? What are the strengths that I'm bringing to this system of leaders, the team that I am part of, the organization that I am part of? And um, we'll give you this activity too, so you can take it away and do it with your teams if you want. Um, but really it's understanding our strengths in a network of other leaders. How does this sound? Is this distinction clear? Are there any questions about this? Give me a thumbs up if we're good. Thumbs down if we're not. 
and you can come off mute and ask a question if you have any. We're so far, we're good. Okay, great. So we're going into this workshop with the understanding that each of you is a leader and each of you is bringing unique strengths. So we're gonna unpack what some of those are. Um, before we do the activity, and there's just a nice quote here I wanna share from Wangari Matai. Uh, a great river always begins somewhere. Often it starts as a tiny spring bubbling up from a crack in the soil. But for the stream to grow into a river, it must meet other tributaries, right? Working among other leaders and join them as it heads for the lake or the sea. Okay. Before we dive into the activity, I wanna take a minute and I would love to see in the chat, and this is a time for you to not be shy. Uh, I want you to tell us something that you already do that you think is great as a leader. Tell me one of your strengths as a leader. And some of you may, might be like, oh, I do not want to answer this question. <laughs> Why is she asking me this? I don't like talking about this. Great. And what is one thing that you see as a strength in yourself today on this call? What do you see as one of your leadership strengths? Go ahead and tell me in the chat. I want to see them. Just do it. Put aside all of the, I don't want to, I don't want to. Put it in the chat. Oh, we have some, oh, great. Look at them coming in. Collaborating, reflective, flexible. Try to encourage multiple perspectives, creative. Get to know my colleagues personally, with help, which helps in our communication. Speaking up when others remain silent. Powerful one. Caring, empathy. I rely on my colleagues' expertise to decide decision-making. I come prepared with ideas, but also listen to other people's inputs and ideas. Great. Oh my gosh, there's so many. Harmony, organizing. Constant desire to learn, encouraging others to do the same, but in their own way. All right, this is so great. Passion, fun, motivation, good listener. Okay, excellent. Look at all you fabulous leaders. All right, so we're gonna learn more. We're gonna dig deeper um, and learn more about each of our leadership styles. So what we're gonna do is an activity now. You need a pen, you need a piece of paper. And at the end, you're gonna, you're gonna, um, we're gonna share four styles with you and you'll be in one of four boxes. And I know some people don't like these activities. Uh, like they might feel limited by it to be put in a box and to be told like, this is the way you always are, but this is just an exercise. Um, it'll give you some more information about your style or your styles, plural. And uh, this will change over time. This will change the situation that you're in. So it's very fluid, it's very flexible. But for the purposes of the activity, you will be literally like in a box. So just, we'll ask you to go with the flow for now. And what you need to do is get a piece of, uh, on your pen, piece of paper, I want you to draw this axis. So all you have to do literally on your piece of paper, oh, my virtual background's not helping, but just, a straight line down and a straight line across. That's all you need. Can you give me a thumbs up when you're ready? Really easy, super fast. Adrian's ready, Laura's ready, Tara is ready, Harriet is there. Great, I think most everybody is with us. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is I'm going to read some information to you and put in the middle of the axis an X. That's your starting X. Your X is gonna move as we do this activity. So right now your X is in the middle. The first thing I'm going to read is, um, is going to have you move along the horizontal axis. So on the left, we have water. On the right, we have wind. I'm going to read the descriptions of them and then you're going to move your X. Yep, I'm close to water, I'm gonna move this way or nope, I'm really like wind, I'm gonna move the other way. <clears throat> and here's the, here's the um, deciding information. So 
if you are close to water, if you're going to move your ex towards water, you would say this. I don't often voice strong opinions. I put other people before myself. I'm very flexible. You probably don't really know what I think unless you ask me. And it's hard for me to state my own needs. I don't easily state my own needs. That's on one side, water. On the other side, we have wind. And if this is true for you, you would say, I state my opinions easily. People know exactly what I think, feel, and want. I'm an open book. I tell it like I see it. And I have no problem telling you when you're wrong, when I need to. So you're going to move your X um, along this axis. You can put it closer to wind if you feel like that's more you. You can put it closer to water if, if that feels true to you, but it can't be in the middle. You just have to move your, your X to one side or the other. Everybody good? I see heads nodding. Great. So now your X is going to stay where it is horizontally, and I'm going to give you information, and you're going to either move it up or down. So you're going to move your X up if this is true for you. I am calm and rational. I do not get flustered about anything. I have difficulty acting excited about the things that I really care about. My emotions are a glassy pond. So you'll move your X up if that's true for you. Or if this is more true, you'll move it down. And for this, you would say, I tell everyone how I feel about everything. I get angry at injustice. I cry at sad movies. My emotions are extremely active, both high and low. So if that feels more true for you, you'd move your X down. So on the bottom, we have the, what we call the hot pepper. Very emotions, very active, high and low. And on the top, we have what we call the cute, cool cucumber. It's like cool. Emotions are a glassy pond, nice and steady. So by now, your, your X should be in one of four quadrants. Is everybody have their X? Somewhere. Galaxy, I see your, your hand up. Do you have a question? Sorry, that was a mistake. Oh, okay, no problem. So everybody has their X. So it would be, your X would be in one of these four boxes. And look at where your X is and look at the letter associated with it. So right now my X is in the D box, D. But your X might be in AA, your X might be in RM or in SM, okay? What I want you to do now, if you're familiar with Zoom, I want you to rename yourself and put the letter in front of your name. So if I renamed myself, let's see if I can do this really quick. Uh, I might put this. So I look like this in Zoom, SM. Go ahead and take a minute and try and rename yourself with the letter that your X is currently in. Let's see, Delphine is an RM, great. So is Rena. And Becky, SM, great. Patrick, D. Tara is an AA. Excellent. Does everybody have their X know what letter they are, even if you, you're not changing your name? Give me a thumbs up if you have your letter. If you want to change it, um, you have to go to your, your Zoom window, your Zoom video box. You should see three dots, dot, 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 and then there should be an option for rename. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's not working, it's not a big deal. I, we're just curious to see what your, what your result is. Okay, so what, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna walk you through what each of these represents. Each of these is a different style. And you're gonna get a chance to think, yep, this is true for me, or nope, not quite right for me. And you'll have a chance to move at the end if you wanna change 
um, what style uh, you think is the best, the best match for you. So, okay, first up, we have AA. This is the top left. This is the analyst and architects. Okay, so if this was true for you, if this was, um, these were your letters, then this, this hopefully will, will, will resonate with you. And for each one, I'm gonna share some of the strengths. And for each one, I'm going to share some areas where leaders might not be mature yet, some immature areas. So that they might be true for you, maybe they're not. Maybe you've developed past some of these immaturities, but I'll just flag some things to look out for. So for analyst architects, you are really good information and opinion seekers. You gather the information. You are good at analysis and process observation. You prefer to make decisions based on facts. And you can generate new solutions that work. You're good at translating feelings into experiences and into ideas. Um, you, however, some things to look out for. You might be slow to make decisions because you might get stuck in the details. You might leave decisions to other people or focus on only one thing at a time. And um, watch out for non-involvement or unrealistic ideas. So if a leader has this style, then honor their need for information. They're, they're gonna want information. So respect that need of, that they have. Um, and also request that the leader tells you how they will decide um, or delegate and by when. So to help them keep, keep moving along. So some effects on the larger team or system. Analysts and architects are often in the minority, but their function is essential. If a team doesn't pay attention to this area, it will miss out on significant learning that comes from observation and analysis. And the team may also um, be missing important process steps or alternative perspectives. Too much of this style in a team can stall movement because of the discussion or laid back attitude and analysis might allow opportunities to pass because decisions aren't being made. Analysts and architects Techs are essential at developing new alternatives at the systems level. Boy, don't we need that right now in our world. New alternatives at the systems level. Okay, that was our analyst architects. Lee gave a, a heart eye. She was an AA or he. Um, that's great. Okay, so that's our first style. Going on to the next one, D. So if you were in the top right quadrant, D stands for driver. Drivers are information and opinion givers. They make decisions easily. They are often the keepers of the vision in the group. They are great at taking a position, being direct, and making things happen. They are usually not upset by critical feedback. However, some things to look out for if, the, if a driver is, um, might be less mature. They might be impatient with decision-making. They're ready to go. They want to decide. They might be impatient. They might make mistakes if they decide without enough information. And they might be perceived as impersonal or lose connection with the group. Um, they have to be careful not to overlead. So if a leader has this style, be as direct as possible with them and bring them your problems and opinions. They want this. They expect this. So some effects on the, on the team and larger system. If a team doesn't have any drivers, they have to pick up driver functions. Otherwise, they won't reach their far-reaching goals. Mature drivers are non-reactionary with a strong ability in the other quadrants, and they can help ground a group. When this style is not mature, there might be too much individual, individuality or structure. Turf battles or a lack of member autonomy can, can happen. And drivers are essential at scaling up actions and alternatives. So these great system-wide solutions that our analysts and architects are coming up with, drivers help make it happen, help scale it up and bring it forward. Okay, that was our second style. Two more to go. All right, next one, relationship masters. This is, these are RM, those of you who were in the bottom left quadrant. 
So relationship masters are great at building and sustaining community and great at networking. They support others. They praise and feel concern about other people. They work well on a team. They are great at building rapport, consensus, commitment, and seeking feedback. And they display a very high regard for others' wishes and viewpoints. And they often have access to private or personal information. So um, within the team, they might know what is happening in somebody's personal life and their family life or you know, how somebody's really feeling. They'll have access to that information because they have good relationships. Um, some things to look out for in a relationship master if the style is less mature. They might not take an unpopular stance if it puts a relationship at risk. They might put so much emphasis on relationship that decision making might fall behind. And they might forget or downplay their own needs to the detriment, to their own detriment because they're so focused on the needs of other people. So if a leader has this style, you may need to ask them to um, be really specific in outlining expectations. You will uh, encourage encourage them to give you critical feedback and tell them you that when you want to know what they think because they might not tell you if it's a little sensitive. So some effects on the larger team or system, you really cannot have too much caring and respect in your group. It's the glue, it's essential for your team to function. And as a leader, it's really powerful when it's combined with the other styles. If a team has only this style, it might not take enough risks or it might make or um, or it might not make enough decisions to move forward so in a significant way. The team might also avoid co conflict to the extent that there is um, a lack of depth um, in the in the innovation that's happening. So within larger systems, relationship masters play a really critical role in building networks and in collaborations. Again, another one, we really need this network building and collaboration. Um, so in a really, really essential style. Okay, and last one, we're almost to the discussion. Um, last one here is our spontaneous motivators, SM. I saw a few spontaneous motivators. Um, so you can tell us if this is true for you. Spontaneous motivators are energizers who often voice their ideas and supply passion to follow those ideas. They are really great at motivating and inspiring other people through their vision. They are good at energetic dialogues with other people and some things to look out for. If they're less mature, they, they might be emotionally tied to their ideas um, and objectivity might be hard for them. And they might create an emotionally charged climate if too much emphasis is put on challenging others and confronting assumptions. So if a leader has this style, it's important to know your position and don't be afraid to speak it or voice it and ask them to give you concrete examples to back up their thoughts. Because spontaneous motivators, I, I spend some time in this quadrant, like we can just become so bound emotional about our ideas that we have to remember to provide examples. It's not all about our emotions, like they have to be able to provide the, um, the backing for it. So some effects on the larger team and system, spontaneous motivators are often light bulbs teams and communities need this function to sparkle, to create, to stir the pot. A team without this style might maybe functional, it might work, but it might be somewhat lackluster. When mature people with this style appropriately manage their emotions, this is highly effective. If you have too much of this style present in a leader or with a team, or if they're not mature, your team might be overly reactive or so impassioned about their ideas that they lose touch with other realities. So many charismatic leaders, as well as cult leaders from a cult, uh, come from this quadrant. So that's an overview of the styles. And here's a summary. 
We have our analyst architects are great with the data, the analysis, finding patterns, coming up with new frameworks. We have our drivers who are great at action, at directing, at moving things forward. We have our relationship masters who are the glue. They, they emphasize connection and caring. And we have spontaneous motivators who provide that sort of emotional stimulation. How, are there any questions about any of this? Did anybody find that they, they had to change? They're like, oh, I'm not that at all. I'm, I'm actually that one. Are there any questions? Any reactions? Yeah, Laura, I see your hand up. Can we be a mix? Can you be a mix? Absolutely. Can you say more about why, why, you, why you're asking that? I'm a little bit of AA and a little bit of RM, um, depending on the situation. So yeah, I'm kind of more AA, but definitely not 100%. Absolutely. Yes, we are often a mix of these. Thank you. And sometimes it changes if you're talking about how we are with family versus how we are at work, that can change. Um, Rena says they feel like they fall in all four categories. Depending on the situation and other variables. Yes, exactly, Rena. We, we move around. The relationship master is supposed to be on the lower right. I don't think so. I think I got them correct there. Relationship master is on the lower left. I found the same. Couldn't place myself between D and SM, and they seem to align with characteristics from both. Yep. Dale, yes, we are often a mixture of these. And it's one of our strengths to be able to shift from one to another based on the situation that comes up. All right, so what we're gonna do now is, um, yeah, Rena found it useful to hear how to approach these leaders and colleagues, exactly, yep. Yeah. So what we're gonna do now is put you into a breakout group with um, three to four other people and we're gonna give you some discussion questions. And what I want you to do when you get into your room, and Leela's gonna be creating these and, and sending us away in just a minute, um, just dive right into these questions. Hi, I'm Nina. I am a relationship master. And this is what I think about this. Like, let's just spend most of the time in this breakout talking about the content. And then um, if you wanna connect more professionally about you know, what your interests are for conservation, like you can exchange emails at the end, but you know, just dive right into these questions. And here they are, and Leela's gonna put them into the chat for us as well. But question number one, what do you like about leading from this style? So um, for Tara, who put, hers, who put hers as an AA, what do you really like about being an analyst and architect? What do you like about that? Or what do you love about being a spontaneous motivator? Why, why does that feel good for you? What do you love about it? That's your first question. Second question, which style is it hardest for you to lead from? So for example, if I spend most of my time as a spontaneous motivator, um, what style is it hardest for me to adopt? Maybe it's hard for me to be an analyst architect. Okay, why? What is it about that style that feels challenging to you to step into, to lead from? And then the third question is, what style is it hardest for you to follow? So in a team, what is it, is there one style that it's like you find it harder for you to work with? Um, and why? What comes up when you think about working with somebody who has that style? What makes it difficult to follow them? So these are your three discussion questions. We're gonna put you in a breakout for, let's see, how are we doing on time? Should we do, I think we have time for 12 minutes. 12 minutes sounds good. Um, 
we have 12 minutes again dive right into the questions and then when we come back we'll we'll have a whole group discussion about any observations that you've had what you what you're taking away from this activity are there any questions no everybody good okay then Leela, whenever you're ready send us away to breakouts and we'll see you back here soon sounds good all right see you all soon Hey everybody. hey everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yes, thank you. Hey. Zoom is cruel Zoom is cool. and cuts people off wow. mid sentence. <laughs> so I appreciate that your conversations are still going on and we're 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 brought back here. Um, but how did it go? What did what what did you learn about yourself, about leadership styles? you want to share i can share a few tidbits from ours oh was someone was, was there someone else go for it nina okay just i think our group really exemplified how much we need each other <laughs> um from the different leadership styles um and interestingly several of us went with the question of which style is the hardest for you to follow a couple of us mentioned that it'd be hard to, it's maybe hardest to follow someone with our same style because we recognize that we really do need, um, you know, we need a driver if we're a relationship master or, you know, we need a little bit of everything. Um, so I just think it was a great discussion and really highlighted how much we were each from a different quadrant and it, it really showed how much we need each other. <laughs> Beautiful. Indeed, one of the main takeaways here we hope is exactly that each of these styles has an essential function, an essential role and contribution to play in our teams. We need them all. They all are valuable. Thank you. Other insights? Anna, did I see you wanting to raise your hand? Or were you just, or did I see your hand moving on your <laughs> screen? Uh, no, I'm just giggling to myself. Okay. <laughs> uh, Rena, I think I saw your hand go up. Yeah, I think I was in the same room as Anna. And uh, I found it interesting that some of us said we actually had, <laughs> had trouble with both ends of the spectrum. We, were, we said, uh, had trouble with, drivers and had troubles with the AAs. Um, and, um, and I found it curious that at least I heard less of having trouble with the RMs and the SMs. And maybe that's because, at least for me, I don't actually associate those people with making the decisions. I associate them with other aspects of leadership. And so maybe that question just didn't apply so much to that, those people. Interesting. But I popped in and out of some of your rooms just for a minute to see if there were any questions. And what I heard sometimes was like, I have a problem with a driver who does this, who has a particular behavior as a driver. So um, just wanted to flat, just make that observation that it might not be the driver it's function itself, but somebody who might have a less mature um level within that style that actually creates some of the the tension that we might feel with that style and not it as a whole if that makes sense um other observations insights i thought it was really helpful to think about leadership through this framework because yeah, just like thinking about how I am as a leader and how other people are as leaders and how like people can have certain strengths and weaknesses. Um, yeah, I thought it was really helpful. That's great. Thanks for sharing. And we we only have about eight minutes left, but while you're while you're still here, if you want a PDF of this activity to be able to run this with your teams or on your own again, put your email in the chat and we'll save it and we'll send you the PDF 
Otherwise, we have no we have no way of tracking you are here. <laughs> so put your email if you want a copy of the exercise. Um, yeah, other thoughts that came up as you were in your groups. Yeah, Becky. Um, I think just um, thinking about where I fall naturally, and then as I mature as a leader, trying to make sure I'm pulling in those good attributes from the other three quadrants, and that, um, right, that, that to me, kind of trying to recognize that I'm always going to be over where where I just naturally fit, but I can always try to attain kind of pulling in those qualities that um, maybe make others not feel so pressured or not feel uncomfortable um, with my inherent nature, um, but still recognize the benefits of my style as well. So I think being able to balance that. Great. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Capitalizing on the strengths of the styles of your teammates. What how do they work really well? How can they um, work at their at their best? Absolutely. I've also seen that with, yeah, I, I'm naturally, I guess, AARM, but with certain team members, uh, I found I have to go outside my comfort zone and um, use some of those other styles sometimes. Um, so yeah, adjusting based on my own strengths and weaknesses, but also how I see they work and respond as well. Um, yeah, work in progress. We all are, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and exactly, it it is an act of leadership to step into a different style that you see is missing and to try and contribute that to a team. And it could feel really uncomfortable if it's not a style you're used to being in. And you might not be that mature if it's not a style you're working in, but it is an act of leadership to, to step into that in service of the team's effort. Um, other observations, we have just a few more minutes. Just wanted to share as well, there's a comment from Dale in the chat that in their group, they discussed the shift to a flat organizational structure. So having leaders increasingly acting as facilitators. So I just think this is an interesting point, bringing diverse opinions and values together, maybe optimizing these styles, which I think is very reflective of, we do need all of these different styles in order to form effective teams, definitely. Thanks, Leela. And thanks, Dale, for raising that in the chat. Surprising that so many scientists are not AAs, right? <laughs> you would think, got a lot of data people, but it's very diverse, very diverse. There's also those differences between managers and leaders that is perhaps not as clear in some organizations. Um, what a manager does versus a leader, and then kind of the the different roles associated with those two. Yeah. And regardless of whether or not you're a manager, everybody has can relate to these styles and can think about their leadership, right? In different ways. And managers too have an opportunity to think about how that builds in with their teams. Um, great, so we have just three more minutes left. Obviously, this is just the start of what could be a lifelong exploration of your own style, of the styles of others. And I see that many of you put your emails in the chats. We'll be sending this to you as a PDF so that you can you can do this on your own. Um, and it's really in an interesting activity to revisit one year from now, are you in the same place that you were today? Um, five years from now, look back and see how you've moved because we all do, we all move, we change, we grow, our circumstances change. And so it's an, an ongoing conversation, an ongoing um, discovery of what we do well and what our growth areas are. Um, so being open to seeing both of them is, is great.
And I just want to wrap up by, let's see, sharing my screen one more time and making a, a short plug. So here we go. Here, hopefully you can see this. Um, as I said at the start, if you were here, um, Leela and I are part of the Conservation Leadership Program. And the last bullet point here, we have a booth, a virtual booth in the exhibit hall. So come there if you and say hello to us or another member of our team to learn more about CLP, who we are and what we do. Um, so please, we hope to see you there. And then we are also collaborating on two more workshops in the Congress. Both of them are happening tomorrow, one at 10 Eastern and the other at 1 p.m. Eastern. So we hope that you will join us again um, for one of those workshops. But otherwise, yeah, we are just about out of time. So I just want to say thank you so much for coming, for being part of this. We will send you the PDF in the mail and wishing you, wishing you very well with the rest of the Congress and the rest of your uh, leadership exploration. So thank you so much for joining um, and hope to see you at another session. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.